truth is beyond words. Truth cannot be obtained from words. Truth is existential, eternal, and magnanimous. Truth cannot be contained in words. No word can convey truth. It is like a thorn that gets embedded in you. You can use another thorn to remove it. However, once the thorn is out, both become equally redundant. The words will not deliver truth. However, they can act like the thorn to remove the thorn of illusion of knowledge that you hold as your own. When this happens, word, words will have served their purpose and then become utterly useless. When you have thorn bricked into your body, you can use another thorn to take out the first thorn. But then after the purpose is served, the two thorns become useless. So too, word is necessary to take you to the state of wordlessness. And when this happens, word, words will have served their purpose and then become equally useless. Words, irrespective of the source, do not convey truth. But if words delete words, if words are erased, and if mind is emptied so that words do not hold on to it, then of itself the mind attains truth. Truth is nowhere outside, instead it is within each one of us. Once the mind gives up its habits of looking outward, truth is not difficult to attain. As long as we look to gurus, to masters, we are looking outwards. As long as we hold on to our scriptures, we are looking outward. As long as we cling to the words of others, that which is attained in the wordless and inner serenity remains unknown and unknown. Certainly words can create understanding when mind is understood and witnessed. Words disappear and remain silent substance. And we can hear unconsciously or listen meditatively. The very act of listening, the very act of listening can become meditation. A poet once went to the sheesh. A poet once went to the sea seashore. It was early morning. The sun's cool radiance filled the sky. The breeze came with a touch of the waves. The joy of the scene filled the poet's heart. Delighted he began to dance. Oh this bliss. The joy, but his thoughts went back to his beloved lying in the hospital. How he wished that she were here besides him to share this beautiful morning. He was a poet, so the scene affected him more. Tears welled up in his eyes and soon he wiped them away. What if I filled a casket? What if I fill a box with this beautiful morning and sent it to her? He brought a box and lovingly opened its lid to the wafting breeze and the dancing rays. He then sealed it with care and sent it to his beloved. 
explaining to her how much he had missed her in those lovely surroundings, but that he was sending them to her in a box. The letter read, so did the box, but when she opened it, there was no ray of sun, no cool breeze, and no glory of the morning that her lover had described. It was only an empty box. What is at the what is at the seashore cannot be carried in a box, and also there is no way to fill the experience of the ocean of truth in the womb of the words, and also there is no way to fill the experience of the ocean of truth in the womb of words. Only words blank and empty remain. That which was experienced at the seashore of truth is left far behind. Those who reach the shores of truth, they too long to convey the joy of their experience to those they love, so that those who could not come that far may also get a glimpse of that wonderful experience. They fill their chests with the words and send them to us. The Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, the Quran reach us, but that which they try to send remains far behind. The essence does not reach. Their compassion is unquestionable, but their words fail to convey truth. Truth is realization of innerness, harmonious and trying. When words are dropped, the substance remains contained into words overflowing. Then understanding becomes consciousness and awareness is the only thing that remains when experiences are left far behind. And the experiencer and the experience do disappear. Words have never been adequate. If the beloved had held the box to her bosom and danced, we could have called her insane. But if she had caught the meaning behind the box, she would have run to the seashore. Then she would have been part of the joy of the dancing waves and cool breeze. But this is possible only if, after getting the message, she is willing to cast the casket aside and set up towards the place from where something was attempted to be conveyed. But it is possible only if, after getting the message, she is willing to cast the casket aside, set out set out towards the place from where something was attempted to be conveyed. Those who likewise forget the scriptures and leave them aside and proceed towards the very source of the scriptures find themselves one day at the shores of the ocean of truth. Those who likewise forget the scriptures and leave them aside to proceed towards the very source of the scriptures find themselves one day at the shores of the ocean of truth. But we are such fools, we made a fanfare of the Bhagavad Gita and are completely oblivious of this source from where Krishna sent the message of the Bhagavad Gita. We also have, also we have done the same with Bible and the Quran. If Krishna and Christ, Mahavir and Buddha happen to look us, they will shed tears of anguish. They will say we try to send them a whiff of the sea breeze 
but they have clung to the words of our message and remained where they were if they had their way they would snatch all the books and throw them into the ocean but even if krishna were to snatch the bhagavad gita away from us we would catch him by the neck because what we are indeed besides bhagavad gita or our scriptures our lives are meaningless without holding the scriptures in our hands russian play writer dostoevsky wrote a book a play the brothers karamazov in that he says that after 1800 years since his death jesus thought that the time was right for him to revisit the earth There were churches erected in every village to preach his message. There were priests and monks cross hanging from their necks. Almost half the world has turned Christian. He was sure of a festive and joyous welcome. So one Sunday, Jesus descended into a village and stood under a tree outside the church. people were returning from the village church morning mass was over they were surprised to see a christ like figure standing under the tree who is this man dressed like jesus he must be an actor they thought they gathered around him full of curiosity and began to question him your acting is perfect you look exactly like christ but i am christ replied jesus they laughed aloud one threw a stone another a slipper and they are all danced around him calling him insane one out of pity told him to go away from here before the priest caught him Your priest is my priest. Don't you recognize me? I am the one to whom you pray every morning. We shall worship you as you deserve. If you do not make yourself scarce quickly, they told him. Jesus in his compassion forgave them. Perhaps they really did not recognize him. but priest was bound to for he sang his praises all day then along came the priest the noisy crowd became silent as he approached then one by one they touched his feet such is the word such is the word it will stone god but it will prostrate before those who make business out of him who made business out of religion this is blasphemy exclaimed jesus keep quiet said the people if the priest hears you he will feel insulted this this drew the priest's attention towards jesus who is this rascal he asked bring him to me You too do not recognize me Jesus asked the priest and you wear my cross around your neck but Jesus overlooked the fact that the cross he was hung on was made of wood while the cross that hung around the priest's neck was made of wood was ever a cross to hang a man by made of gold was ever a cross to hang a man by made of gold and it is the man who is a man who is hung on cross and not the cross on the man and it is the man who is hung on the cross not the cross on the man this looked like satan himself proclaimed the priest our jesus came to earth but once there was no need for him to come back again now we are here to look after his 
So Jesus was locked up in the attic of the church. He was shot. This was the same kind of treatment he had received 1800 years ago. Will I be crucified again? He wondered. The priest came to visit him in the middle of the night. He fell at his feet and begged forgiveness. I recognize you already, O glorious one, but we are constrained to deny you in the marketplace. You need not take the trouble of coming again. We are carrying out your work with all sincerity. Business is good. And if you come, there is bound to be confusion. We have barely got things going smoothly and you come again. Please understand we cannot acknowledge you in public. Not only that, we might have to resort to the same tactics to disown you as we did 1800 years ago. Please forgive us, we are helpless. The same will be the fate of Krishna or Mahabir or Muhammad if they choose to come back again. We do not realize that those whose words we cling to have already warned us, have already warned us not to, but truth is not in words. Truth is present in the wordless silence where all thoughts have disappeared. Truth will not be in my words or in the words of anyone else. Then why do masters speak? Then why do masters speak? Masters speak to snatch away your word away from you. The words of the masters are like the thorns that is used to pick out the word from within you that is stuck like a thorn in your mind. The words of the masters are like the thorns that is used to pick out the word, pick out the words from within you that is stuck like a thorn in your mind. Thus the master will have attained his end. Then you will be freed from the words both within and without. Then the mind devout of the words is ready to set out towards truth. It is a matter of great regret that instead of grasping the essence of the message of those who come to liberate us, we merely catch hold of their persons. Buddha had forbidden his disciples from making his statues. But today, Buddha's statues outnumber those of anyone else. In fact, the Urdu word for a statue is derived from the word Buddha. The Urdu word for a statue is Bud. Bud comes from the root Buddha. And it has come to mean any statue. There are Buddha idols to the tune of often thousand in a single temple in China and Buddha had warned do not worship me. Man is a strange creature. We catch the one who says do not hold on to me, catch him all the more firmly lest he slips away. The more we like a person, the more we tend to cling him for the fear of losing him. This tendency has made us slaves. If we lose our hold on the old ones, we find new ones to hold. If Mahavir and Krishna, Buddha and Ram are getting out of the hand, we create Gandhi and begin to cling to him. We must have someone or the other to cling on to. We do not want to stand on our own two feet. We wish to declare that only that person is qualified to call himself a man. Discarding others stands on his feet. 
Only he can take hold of himself and cast aside all outside help. Remember, he who clings to others has no faith in himself, because he finds himself weak, tries to drive his strength from others. Lack of faith in oneself becomes faith in others. When you do not have faith in yourself, you replace it with the faith in others. He who has faith in himself places his faith nowhere else. The irony of it is all. He who cannot hold on to himself, he who cannot hold on to himself, how he can hold on to another? How can he sustain another when he has no power over himself? Faith in oneself is religion. Faith in oneself is religion, not faith in others. God has given to each person all that he has given to everyone. Each one of us has that in him who has manifested itself in others as Ram, Krishna, Buddha, Mahabhi and Jesus. You carry within the seed of that which is omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent. What becomes manifest is present in seed within all of us. But when I say leave them, I have no enmity towards their person. How can there be such wonderful people? What can I have against their person? What reason do I have to find faults with them? All I mean is as long as you hold on to their persons as Jesus, Buddha, Mahabhi, Krishna, you will never be able to find yourself. And he who fails to find himself is disqualified to enter the temple of God. He is disqualified to temple of inertness, temple of silence, temple of eternity. He who fails to recognize himself is disqualified to enter the temple of God, the temple of eternity, the temple of blissfulness, the temple of innerness. Only this much for this morning.